There he is. All right. Let him run. Nice little fish there. That'll do us. Okay, what you want to do is get him on the reel, Craigie. Keep that rod nice and high. That's it. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. He's a little bigger than I thought. That's the easy way to get him on the reel. Just turn around and follow him down the bank, eh? Because if he gets in that fast water, we want to be able to follow him real quick. Yeah, just, just play him from here for a second, so he'll probably come back. They are a little reluctant to go down those rapids, believe it or not. They do like staying where they live. Yeah, get in now. Keep walking them up, so actually we'll take them right back over the other side. He's a pretty little fish, isn't he? He'll do us to start with. Let's see him bring him in behind that rock there. There we go. Nice. Very nice. Lovely little fresh run Tongariro hen, that one. She'll be about three pound, I suppose. Two and a half, three pounds, but she's nice and fresh. Lovely condition, eh? Yeah. Beautiful colours. Sensational. Yeah, good stuff. All right. Hey, good track. deal. Thanks, mate. <laughs> What we're doing here this morning, we're nymph fishing. Um, as you saw, getting the, the drift to where those fish are laying on the far banks absolutely critical. Using those uh, nymphs that are nice and heavy. Yep. And uh, they seem to move to cross a little bit to the other side, and that's where we crossed over and got that different drift on the other side, and it didn't take long. We're getting what I call the early scouts coming into the river. It's early April, and the, the early fish that are coming up out of Lake Taupo on this morning migration, they're not really feeding in the river. You know, right. they, they've got other things on their mind. Um, so primarily, we're looking for the holding lies where they're sitting in the river. Um, and these fish aren't feeding. You, know, you, could, you could take a fish like that, examine the contents of its stomach, and I can guarantee you that 98% of the fish that you do that to in this river this time of year are completely barren, there's nothing at all in it. Right, so they're, when they're taking a fly, they're not actually seeing it you know, over in the distance a bit and, and charging it, they're actually, you basically got to get it on their nose. Absolutely. Right yeah. on their nose. I, I reckon you, you need to get that fly drifting usually within about a foot to 18 inches of his, right, coming yeah. right down on his nose, and then he's going to come and have a little little go at it. We've had a few takes out there already yeah. this morning with the indicators moved and we've missed them. And that just goes to show you how quickly they take and spit the fly out when they're not being aggressive. Mm. Um, you, get, you get a fish that's living in here over the summer, okay, he'll come up and nail a big cicada dry fly imitation yeah. off the surface, something like that, no problem. And those fish might move 10, 15 feet up off the bottom to hit a big dry fly, and that's yeah. great fun. Oh, that'd be fantastic. But Do they actually it, eat surface, can you use surface like poppers, flies? Not so much poppers, again, it's, it's all about drifting a fly naturally, naturally to them, and the yeah. presentation side of trout fishing is so important. See this, this one here, Craig, she's a, she's a female rainbow, she's actually what we call a maiden fish. This one's never spawned before, so that she'll be three years old. They spend the first year of their life in the river as a par and then a fingerling. Right. And then once they're about 15 centimetres, they migrate out to Lake Taupo where they feed on the little bait fish in the lake for anywhere up to two years. And then they come back as a three year old. Right. And then they spawn every year after that. Okay. Um, so okay. rainbow trout, they're not like salmon, Pacific salmon that die after they spawn. Yep. Okay, these fish can spawn anywhere up to seven, eight, nine times. Okay. Um, so a lot of these fish in here would be wild fish, they're not all hatchery fish? We have no hatchery fish. Oh really? That's one okay. of the special things about New Zealand, why people come here all over the globe to fish for these beautiful wild fish. Yeah, um, fantastic. Believe it or not, these, these fish actually came out here a hundred years ago, just a little over a hundred years ago from California. Yeah. A little place called Sonoma Creek. Um, I actually went into the fish and game department there and they still have a file, uh, a dossier with the original letter dated 18... 
92 requesting rainbow trout be sent to New Zealand. It was <laughs> kind of right? like the holy pilgrimage when we So these we fish are there. descendants of, of those fish? Exactly, basically. and and what they've actually done, because our strain is so pure, and they've taken some of these, these fish, which were originally steelhead strain, and yeah. they've taken them back to reintroduce into the streams in California. I would like to take a fish to eat today, but I'm happy to you know stick with the protocol. What, what do you do with fish up here? Um, we, can, uh, we could take Hershey's of legal size. Um, the minimum size is 45 centimetres, and you're allowed to take three a day. And the Taupo fish are actually really nice to eat. Yeah. We do do a lot of catch and release, which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if you'd like to let that one go, it's your first fish, so it's quite yeah. nice to let your first fish go. Yeah, I first think it, fish go. it'd be good karma, I think, to let him go. Absolutely. The, the, Maori, the Maori tradition is actually that you always let your first fish oh, go really? of the day. Oh, really? Absolutely. We'll definitely stick with that then. Rightio. Most of the tracks around here are pretty easy going, but to get to some of the best water requires teamwork and sure footing, otherwise you're in for a cold, wet end to the day. Even though trout can be found in fast water at times, we are looking for the slower pools and eddies. This is where they wait for their prey to be washed downstream. 90% of the trout in this river are rainbows, with the rest being browns. And the call of that next river bend is always enticing. Give it that roll cast men downstream, that's it, that's perfect. It's right in, right in the zone there, mate. Just let that, let that one drift down. Just fish that all the way down. Just leave it, leave it, leave it. Yeah, set it, set it, set it! Yeah. Oh, nice. Hey, hey! I can't believe I've never done this before. Mate, the thing that worries me now is I'm going to get hooked on this. They say variety is the spice of life. Look at them go. That's nice. <laughs> Great having this clear water, isn't it? All right. Good one. She's got a little bit more colour this one, so that signifies she's been in the river for a little bit longer. That first fish we got was much more silver, so that indicated she'd only just come up from Lake Taupo. You can see how she's quite fat in the belly, this one. You actually see the bulk mass of her eggs in there, so she's on her way up to spawn. A lot of the really serious fishermen that come to the Taupo region undoubtedly come here for the fly fishing, the superb fly fishing in the rivers around here, and that's sort of the purest side of it. But we've had a lazy start this morning. We grabbed the car and a map and we just cruised around ourselves and found a few lakes. And we've come up here and found a beautiful haul of fish without much effort at all. In fact, we're only just walking distance from the car. And that's the sort of fishing that you've got in this region. It, it really is fantastic fishing. We're using these little soft plastic lures here and they're fantastic for this situation. You can hug the bottom, they sink fairly fast. But the other good thing about them is that they're single hook. And that's the rule up on this lake here. You're only allowed to use single hook lures. <laughs> We picked up three beautiful fish. We got a couple of females and a male. We're going to take them home tonight and put them through the smoker. Should be delicious. New Zealand is a must visit destination for any trout fisherman. The fish are prolific and eager and combined with a spectacular environment makes it an unforgettable experience. <laughs> 